Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming for you uh, from, well, Facebook Live today. It's going to be a little bit different and the reasons why it's going to be a little bit different is because we're having a few technical difficulties today. So I'm going to invite my guest in uh, as soon as she, she comes in here. I'm just uh, putting that on so a request can go into the broadcast. So when she comes on, the person I'm getting in today is going to be Daljit Malek. And we call her Rani just because that's what we do because it's a nickname and it's, uh, it's uh, easier to say. So I'm going to try and get her in today. And so my name is Maxine English and I'm coming to you from Unlocking the Feel Issue. And with today's Celebrity Corner. And this lady is absolutely amazing. Now, this lady here has done everything from empowerment to speaking to speaking on stage. Um, she's also an ambassador of uh, women's empowerment. She's an actress. She's had her own TV show and she's had radio shows, you name it. She's at it. We just had a few technical issues today for the last half an hour. I'm just trying to get her on at the moment. Um, so once she comes on, that will be absolutely amazing. I'm keeping an eye on her at the same time on the computer. So if I look down, I'm not ignoring you all. I'm just making sure that I can get her on. Hi, Richard. Very nice for you to uh, come on, my lovely. I'm just making sure that she can get on because we've had quite a few technical difficulties. Um, the video chat has ended. No, I haven't ended. I'm on now. Right, okay, so I'm just speaking to Rani at the moment, so we can actually get her on. You'll excuse my um, my phone just being so out. It's, uh, you know, it's quite a lot around me. Um, I have to come on for a quick 30 seconds on my break, as I'm really busy tonight. That's absolutely fine, Adam. Thank you very much. Um, yes, please share and invite. That would be absolutely amazing. Right, let's see if we can actually get, um, get her in. Approve, yep, yeah, let's approve her in. Let's add her in. Okay, let's see if she comes in. So, ladies and gentlemen, what are you all up to this evening? Let's uh, make sure we get to know. Um, let's add her in. It says it's, it's no answer from live video guest. I don't know why it's not, not answering on that one. It's, uh, it's having a bit of a moment, guys. Um, hang on, let's see if she comes in again. Let's see if I can add her again. So yeah, so go on, tell me tell me exactly what you've been up to today. It's been really, really busy on my end. Um, I've been, well, I feel like a bit like an octopus, really. I've just been doing loads and loads of phone calls, getting loads of people involved. And how are you all looking forward to the empowerment weekend that's coming up? It's going to be absolutely amazing. And um, I'm just trying to get her in. Let me just text her back. Um, trying to get you in and see if she puts it up again. Let's have a look. Approve. Let's approve her in, add her in, no answer from live video guest. Okay, bit confusing with this one here, my lovely. It's uh, What's happening is um, we was, we was talking to Rani earlier today and every time she puts itself in, it sort of kicks her back out again. Right, uh, let's add her. No answer from guest. Right, add your in okay so we're doing it we're doing a training course as well as actually uh being on on live at the same time so we're ready for it, <laughs> making it just a little bit different it's uh let's see if we can get her in all possible all positive tonight adam that's exactly what i like to hear i like positivity let's see if we can add her in again no answer from guest what's going on what's she doing what do i press to send it um okay so I'm all positive tonight, doing my disability website. Fabulous, exactly what I like to hear. So your disability website, Adam, put on there what it is. At least then we can have a look. Daniel's put, working all day on my new website and we to entertainment. Fabulous. Um, add yourself. So let's see if what comes up, because it's not saying that I can add her, but she's trying to add me back instead. The only person it's saying that I can add is Richard. So everybody else has been turned off. Okay, so let's get rid of that. So yeah, it's uh, it's very much this uh, lady that I've got coming on today. She's absolutely an amazing lady. Um, I'm watching Maxine. I did 10 minutes live on Global TV page about why I'm speaking and why I'm an autistic champion. And written on the post of my profile, I have sent a request. Right, let's get, try and get you in now then. It's uh, Rani, I'm trying now. Right, I'm going to press approve. Adding you now. No answer from live video guest. Oh, don't know what's going on here. 
Um, run it, make sure that you've got your thing on to say that you can actually come into lives. Um, when you go on to it, see if you can do it. Um, and, and go for it that way. Uh, we tried to get on Be Live TV today and we had a bit of a nightmare. Um, and then obviously we're trying to get onto Facebook and it's having exactly the same effect. We're having a bit of a nightmare today. But um, we'll, we'll keep talking and we'll keep going over stuff. Um, keep trying there, Ronnie, and see if we can get you in, my lovely. Um, I love you to send your requests, join a broadcast. You can add them at any point. So that's what I've got on mine and that's what you should have on yours. So at least then you can come in. So at the bottom of the screen, what you can do is you can add people in and basically with that, you can you can get yourself on there. At the moment, it's only saying that I can add one person out of all of you. So everybody else must have those turned off, including you. So Ronnie, you need to put it on there, my lovely. Um, and then I can actually add you in myself rather than you keep trying to add yourself in. Um, right, let's see what's coming up. Sorry, guys, I know we're having it. This is, a, this is what happens is when you've got somebody that doesn't know um, exactly how to get everything done. So what we do is, as, as a BeLive TV uh, and, and obviously on our, on our pages, what we do is we help out as many people as we possibly can when it comes to broadcasting. I've sent a request, but I can't request you, my love. Hi there, Jenny. Nice to see you, my love. I'm approving you, um, Rani. So I'm approving you now and add. No answer from video guest. So it's it basically tells me that you haven't got your requests on. Because if you if you had them on, you, I can add people in, but you can't accept them. So I'm adding you, but you need to turn it on on your on your um your feed. So when you go down to the bottom, make sure you turn it on so that you can accept it and also you can you can give them out, but you need to accept as well. So we can actually get that. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, what actually happens is when it comes down to um doing things with you know inspired to achieve global tv it's not just about coming live with you i mean i've had a lot of people come to me this week and say what is it that you actually do and it's very much to do with that uh, you know it, it's to do with not just you know being live on tv so i'm doing things at the same time trying to get her in um what requests are you speaking of jenny i've got a lady coming in called rani and um basically with this it's very much that you know, I'm trying to get her in, but she's never actually done this before. So this is all going to be new to her. So by doing that, what's actually happening is I'm actually training her while we're live. And, and this is exactly what we do. I mean, Jenny knows, Susan knows, and Richard knows. There's a lot of things that happen is when it comes down to, to broadcasting, when it comes down to lives, whether it's Be Live, whether it's Facebook, you know, we don't just go live. You know, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. Um, hi, Mandy. Nice to see you, my darling. Hi, Farah. Um, I will give you a call a little bit later, my darling. I'm uh, obviously broadcasting at the moment. Um, yeah, so it's very much, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. So I think, don't think a lot of people understand how much really does go on behind the scenes because there is so much that goes on that it's very much that, you know, we get, we don't really get, you don't, you don't get a lot of time. I'm not adding on there. Um, I can't really add you. Um, let's take you off there. Right, I can't add you, Jenny, because I'm waiting for my guest to come on. Um, so it's saying it's adding you, so that's brilliant. But, Rani, it's saying that it's not adding you. Oh, we're coming on. She's coming on. Is she? She's in the house! Woohoo! <laughs> you know, I just noticed it, it was my notifications that were off. Yeah, fantastic. See, and this is what happened. It's very much, as I was explaining to you all, it's very much that, you know, it's, it's also every single thing that you do with Inspired to Achieve, it's very much, it's a training ground. Yeah, and this is the reason wow. why we get you on, because it's absolutely fabulous. And Ronnie, it's amazing to see you. And I'm you glad that you're like here. It's been ages. <laughs> you know what? You so inspire me. You know, all these technical things. It's like my son, one of them's not well. The other one is out. Usually they help me with all this kind of stuff. Stuff. even though I'm out and about and do what I need to do but when it comes to technical things I, I'm like I step away <laughs> I wear the, exactly. I wear the so glasses now, to look intelligent <laughs> yeah 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 so now I've stretched your brain and you now know how to go live on Facebook you know now know how to download Be Live TV and yes. you also know um, you have to have your notifications on <laughs> oh definitely uh, that, that's one thing I learned from you today <laughs> See, and that's exactly what it's about. And it's all about that if you decide to come to Yes, You Can Inspire to Achieve, it's all about, you know, giving you the lessons to learn so you know exactly what you're doing when you're doing. And, you know, I'm pro I've got the patience to do that. So it's absolutely fine. But I'm glad you're here, my lovely. 
Oh, likewise. I mean, we've been on the we've been on um, Facebook all day, haven't we? And then we when have. it came to the crunch, I think I think I, I think it's with the notifications. It was really important to put that on. Yeah. So I just Thanks. pressed one button, and I was like, "Wow, I mean, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant." So this is this is the beautiful Ronnie. This is her nickname, um, because I know I know her as Ronnie. Um, and as you can see at the top of the screen, it says Queenie. She goes by so many different names. Explain to people <laughs> who you are and explain sure. to people where we met. Right. We met at the, well, first of all, my name is Rani and Rani means queen. My account got hacked last year and I changed it to Queenie Core Malik because my name is Rani Core Malik. Uh, so that's the, that's the story behind the Queenie name. And we met at the 529 Networking Club, which is based at Pinewood Studios. And as soon as you walked in, I, I felt like, wow, she's just, she's exactly like me. You know, your motivation, your Whoa. your power, you know, you're, you're, you're like totally charged up like I am all the time. People say to me, don't you ever sleep? I do. I sleep when I need to sleep. I don't need to sleep because you know what they say? You, 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 you snooze, you lose. Right. Yeah. So I sleep as much as my body needs to sleep. I mean, there yeah. was a time when I used to work at Heathrow Airport and I used to sleep like 13, 14 hours because we used to do very long shifts. But uh, I think them days are really, really gone now, especially when you have kids and you have all these aspirations and all these dreams to help many people. Um, so what I do is um, I love connecting with people like I did with yourself, Maxine. Soon as I met you, and you know, you says, uh, "Let's do this live show at the Halloween." Um, I think it was the Halloween one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So what we did over the Halloween time is I'd never actually been to Palmer Studios ever, and I got invited by Philip Chan to go to Palmer Studios, and he's like, "Come over," and I was like, I "Don't really know anybody." And he's like, "No, no, no, come over. You'll meet new people." And I was like, "Okay, I'll just go over there and I'll just do it." But the thing is, it was on a Thursday, so which is the day that I normally do my broadcasts. So it was very much, I said to him, would it be okay if I actually did a broadcast while I was there and get a couple of people together so I could interview Philip, but at the same time interview a couple of people that were there. So I spoke to Deborah, who, who run one of the people that runs Pinewood Studios, and mm -hmm. as well as, well as yourself. And it was very much that I said to her, would it be okay if I actually did a broadcast? I'll keep out everybody's way. You know, we're all dressed up. Everyone's dressed up as vampires and witches and, you know, <laughs> and, and in their costumes. And I said, would it be okay for me to do a broadcast? Well, what happened is I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, do what you need to do. This is, you know, you can do it here. I was like, oh, brilliant. So I set myself up a corner. You know, I didn't have, because I didn't know I was going to have lots of people. It was very much, I thought, what I'll do is I'll literally, I'll just hold it. You know, I had nothing with me. I just had my phone. And that's that's how scarce mm -hmm. it was at this particular time. It was just my phone. And I, I was like, I was expecting her to say no, but she didn't. So I was like, right, okay. I should have been more prepared. See, that, that get, teaches me something as well. Always be prepared. Scouts, 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 something like that? Yeah, yeah something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. And, um, yeah, so always, always, always be prepared for the unexpected. So Philip then turned around and said, well, do you know what? I'll get a few people in for you. I was like, yeah, brilliant. Why not? And then all of a sudden, I, I'd have, I, like, literally, the room was filled up with people waiting to be broadcasted and waiting I, to have I interviews. I can't believe how many people were so excited to join your, your live video. Because, you know, for them, it was like, it was just like a random thing. Like you said, you weren't, you weren't um, organized. You weren't expecting her to say yes. But De Deborah is absolutely phenomenal. You know, if anybody needs any help in any way and you come to Pinewood Studios, she will go to that extra mile just to help that person like she did with recently with the, uh, Keith. You know, uh, when Keith came a couple of months ago, um, he needed some help with, um, he, he's one of the first writers who's ever wrote a comic about rugby. You get football yep. comics, you get like uh, sports comics and everything. But his is just based on rugby. Um, yep. I mean, I wish him all the luck. His uh, partner uh, had a, a stroke just before New Year's Eve. Um, I wish Riona uh, um, a beautiful um, recovery. And yeah, I've been watching cool. his live videos. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's such a survivor. Um, he was actually supporting her um, when she went through um, her own you know, uh, problems in her life. She was in a wheelchair. He helped her. He trained her. And somehow they fell in love. And now they're together. Oh, and, you know, he's supporting that. her now. Yeah, he's he's absolutely phenomenal. Back to Deborah. So yeah. she's one of these women who, obviously, she believes in women empowerment. We all do. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, what upsets me is like there's a lot of women who 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 have different organizations, but when it comes to the same noble um, goal that we what we're trying to do or have the same platform, I don't understand why women have to compete against each other when we're we're actually trying to promote the same thing but in different ways. It's not a ba- matter that Maxine's better than Rani or Deborah's better than you know Claire or whatever, right? I don't understand why people can't just come together and and help this uh, common cause. That's right. And that's exactly what it's all about. So, you know, with Rani talking about this, what it basically is, let me explain a little bit about Rani. He's, I'm going to look down because everything that we had was down here. And now, obviously, I'm using my phone. So, you know, you'd have to excuse yeah. the eyes going down. I need some eyes painted on the on the top. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why really I'm so you can't see yeah, my yeah, eyes. Yeah, exa- yeah, exactly. Uh, she's a transformational on- entrepreneur. She's worked over 20 years running and building several businesses within mobile communications, hospitality, catering, and also massive events. Um, you did lots of large scale events. I mean, tell us a little bit about that, Rani. Yeah, it was uh, weddings. We've done parties. I've organized charity events, coffee mornings, you know, something where it makes a difference in someone's life because I mean, I became an, ma- an ambassador for um, a charity, which Don't is Don't go too on... far ahead. Let's do this yeah. bit first. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. So uh, basically, um, the events that I've done have been absolutely phenomenal. Some have been life changing. Some have been just to help uh, support an, a noble cause for someone. Uh, the others have been private weddings, parties, organizations, networking. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just nice to go the extra mile. And, you know, we've had established businesses for over 24 years and every person that's ever come across our path has has always stayed because they know about our uh, goals they know that we we you know we don't look at these these events as as it's a customer we look at it as it's as if it's our own family's events uh, so therefore yeah. we go that extra mile you know it's just like talking to somebody all you got to do is listen half of the time and if you listen um, they feel so beautiful that, oh my God, somebody's actually listened to me because nobody gets time to talk to each other. It's yeah. all this technical stuff that's out now. You know, you you I go on the train I'm sometimes. I sit there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, you sit on the train and you feel really isolated. If somebody was getting mugged in the corner, nobody would realize because everybody's like stuck in their phones, like they, you know. And it's so bad for your posture, your neck, your your eyesight, everything. It's so important to know what's happening while you're on that train. Somebody could walk in with a knife, and you wouldn't even realize he just walked past you. You know, it's so Im- important to be vigilant of what's going on around you. Exactly. So with that, I mean, you've done quite a lot of events and stuff like that that we were talking about. And, you know, and I completely get that because where um, I run my own event side and my own party side, it's very much that I've done quite a few charity events myself. And and by running those kind of charity events, it's very much there's a lot of work goes into it. And, and I was just mm-hmm. talking to people that things that happen behind the scenes is they only see, like, like Brad always puts it, he only sees the elegant swan sitting on top and underneath you're like, quick, quick. <laughs> Yeah. And that's exactly what happens. There is so much that you have to do, you know, when it comes down to events, you know, it's the people, it's, the, you know, it's the people that you're actually doing the charity for that you have to get, you know, the help with. It's all the things, it's all the lighting, it's all the sound, it's, it's people on the door. It's so many different things that you have to get involved with, you know, yeah. that, um, you know, people that, don't realize that that what's, uh, yeah, it's so right. true. People don't realize what happens behind the scenes. Yeah. They just think they've come to an event and that's it. Um, they don't realize, you know, the food has to be on time. You know, it has yep. to be per- perfect. You can't afford to get a uh, food poisoning, whatever, yep. right? Um, and and it's really important to to have to be um, to be like a perfectionist in in your own little way, you know. And then you're still smiling while you're greeting people, and yep. they don't realize how much um, sleepless nights you've had organizing the whole thing. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, it's like one of one of my events I, I did, I did a commercial event and they asked for like three sets of balloons. I mean, how, how you know, how hard would you think it is to blow three balloons up? You know, it's all done, put a bit of ribbon on and tie it up. But let me show you something. I did 35 balloons that day. It took three people five and a half hours between us to actually do those balloons. And that was wow. 35 sets. So you imagine if yeah. I'd have done that on my own, that would have been over 15 hours work just to blow balloons up. And people just no. don't realise how much everything takes to actually to get started and get going. So, you know, hats off to you when you do big events like that. 
it is it is hardcore so you know that's my hands i mean we've done we've done events for like up to 2000 people 500 people 1500 people in um in farmhouses we've done it in big hotels it's 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 a lot a lot of work you know you got to get the catering equipment you've got to hire the vans you got to get the staff you got to make sure everything's intact you got to go one night before set up everything so actually on the day all you got to do is it's, it's it's all teamwork it's all yeah, teamwork 100%, and if 100%. you have a good team behind you um anything can be you know anything can happen just like yeah. um you know in in life when you're trying to support somebody if you know yeah. that what you can do for these people it's it's really important to do that it's not it's no point in telling somebody you can help them when you can't or you know a lot of people they've shared personal journeys with organizations and and other people and their their personal stories have been misused and this is this is again it comes to women yeah i know i mean i'm a woman i mean i love Sorry, women. Richard, I love... richard just put on on the um the screen there because I, I i can see some of them and but you need to bring sure. yourself up a little bit um ronnie because I'm, I'm i'm lost your chin that's a little bit better um yeah okay. richard just put max has got a lot of puff <laughs> you said what max has got a lot of puff <laughs> talking oh. about balloons <laughs> You know, we're talking about helium there, uh, Richard. Right, yeah, let me go on to some of the comments. We've had quite a few comments on here. Um, sure. So we've got, we've had loads of comments on here. Um, right, let's, let's do some of them because I'm not going to be able to go through all of them today. Um, sure. Mandy's put, she's a newbie at Tech 2. Um, and um, hello, best of luck. Uh, we'll be watching. Absolutely fantastic there, um, Aisha. So that's uh, from another one from Pinewood Studios. Um, I interviewed her the other the other week. Um, mm -hmm. Susan's told me about her show, and you know, I'm just going up a little bit. I know we can do that in a second. Uh, thank you very much, there, Daniel. He shared it at Wito Entertainment page. He's in Spain. Uh, Giannio, as Tony said, Rani is an amazing soul, has a beautiful heart, love her spirit. Uh, I can't see the rest of it. Go Warriors! There you go. That's what he's mm -hmm. put on there. Um, yeah. no, no, she's a lady. Uh, she's a. She actually runs a. a, a um, a warrior campaign in based in Birmingham. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a lovely lady. <laughs> Rich has put, yes, I never ever understand it. Even some with some male empowerment believe pure equality between all genders. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all it's about important. working with each other. True. You know, we we women groups only they they actually isolate men and there's so many men who just want someone to talk to. You know, they don't get a chance to talk to someone because they feel that, um, number one, they're not supposed to talk about, you know, how they're feeling. I mean, I've come across so many men who have actually been through domestic violence. Um, they're depressed. They want to kill themselves. You know, they don't know how to continue with life. And, you know, they just wanted someone to talk to. I talk to yeah. everybody and anybody. And, you know, that's the good thing about me is that, you know, feeling. there's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember the last Pinewood Studios, all the men were jumping on you and me to take photos because they, they just felt really intimidated that, wow, these women are so powerful. And, you know, I don't know whether it was intimidation. I think it was more the fact is because we were so friendly and we're actually willing to uh, speak to them, it was very yeah, much more yeah. that, that they, they got it, drawn it, to us. So Yeah, exactly, because yeah. we were making yeah. an effort. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Exactly. So Rajan's put, great work, Rani, nice to connect. Um, Dave's put... Uh, hi, Lady Max 2019 is your middle name. <laughs> Rani, stay blessed. Um, oh. And then you've got Richard's talked about social media and lots of people saying, uh, Daniel's put, I know when I do WeTo Entertainment events, it's months or years in planning and sleepless nights. It's exactly that, Jamie, when it does. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of time to plan stuff, but it's very much that, you know, we try and fast forward everything as much as we possibly can because we have so much to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's go on to the next bit. So let's talk about a little bit about you're a passionate advocate in women's rights and empowerment, which is obviously what we already touched on. Now, yeah. you're also <laughs> a public speaker and you spoke at the WEF event, which is the Women's Economic Forum, and the WAW, yeah. which is the Women's Appreci is that Appreciating, women appreciating women? women. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about those two. Right. Uh, women Appreciating Women is a... Um, is an event organized by a lady called Dr. Pauline Long, who mm -hmm. appreciates women. Um, you're honored as a guest. You're, you, you, get oh, oh, you get a few oh, minutes. You get a few minutes. 
<laughs> you get a few minutes to talk on stage about what you've done and how you know what thrives you what what encourages you to help women and this was at an african event so it's nice to be asian and be noticed and recognized and be you know be being given a, a beautiful award for you know what you've done because a lot of asian and african people don't actually come forward because it's a taboo because you know we're not allowed to talk about it because we're not supposed to show that we're survivors or we're quite strong character because back in the you wait until they see me out there <laughs> <laughs> i'm only just starting <laughs> god forbid god forbid <laughs> <laughs> you know what if you walked into an asian event i think they'd look and think oh my god she's going to rip us apart <laughs> i'd be polite at doing it <laughs> no i wouldn't I'd, i'd be very polite and it's um you know at the end of the day you've got to understand that you know it comes down to religions races and everything else you know i'm open to everybody yeah um, but well, you do <laughs> find there is there is some religions and there is some races that turn around and say mm. that we don't want women to talk about things like that However, mm. you know, it really depends on the situation is that, you know, certain places I just won't be able to go. And I understand yeah. that. But other places that I will say what needs to no, be no, said. You'd be surprised. I mean, uh, my friend Sunny, Sunny uh, Angel, uh, she wrote a book called Wings, a beautiful, phenomenal woman. She's actually been going with um, by Mohan Singh Ji, I was telling you earlier, from the Sikh mm -hmm. Awareness Society, to mosques where women have come forward and they have said, you know, this this uh, suffering with this um, issues going on in the house, how they feel isolated, they can't breathe. I mean, I was talking to a lady the other day and she said that she felt so isolated, like she weren't allowed to talk to people, she weren't allowed to have driving lessons. And this is based here in UK. These are family families based, born and brought up in England, but they still have that mentality of being back home. You know that oh you're not allowed to talk to boys, uh, you can't wear no makeup. Um, you know. Are you sure you want me to go into these places? <laughs> no, trust me, you will be so welcomed in the Sikh community, in the Muslim community. You know because they want women to come forward and and you know it's it's nice because there's there's a lot of women who actually want someone to talk to, but they don't get that in the in the local high street because they feel like people are staring at them, especially women who wear hijabs. Um, they feel like people are looking at them thinking, you know, oh, are they a terrorist? You know, there's been so many attacks and people get thrown, papers thrown at them. You know, they get rubbish thrown at them or chips thrown at them. You know, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. But being from an Asian community, you know, it's like, um, especially men who wear turbans. Now, you have to be educated enough to know that the difference between a Sikh and a Muslim, right? They all wear turbans. They all have the beards like hanging out um but it, it's just that if you're educated enough to know that that's a muslim guy and that's a sikh guy just like the guy that had his turban removed outside houses of parliament last year mm -hmm. you know there was such a big commotion about it just like the sikh guy who didn't get a flight from paris because they thought he was a terrorist that he was hiding um, <clears throat> a bomb in his turban um there's actually a beautiful book launch called turbans and tales coming up on the 24th of January, based on all the tales con connected to turbans, how, how Sikhs have been intimidated or targeted for whatever reason. And it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, my friend Am, who's actually the PR behind it, has organized the whole event. And she, she told me, I met her a couple of days ago, um, you know, she told me how phenomenal it's going to be and how important it is to educate people from different communities to actually accept people. You know, it doesn't it, matter it what... It is about knowledge. It, no, is. it is. It's about, about knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I don't think it's... Did you, did you see um, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was last week, where this mom's asking the girl, the girl who ate the... Um, she ate the two cream cakes and... Uh, um, the way her mom asked the questions and she goes, uh, mom, there was a thief. He came into the house and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, her mom was laughing about this whole thing. And then she goes at the end of the, um, you know, this video, this mother was making, she goes, he was a black man. Right. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, you, you'd think that this child would have been educated by her parents to, to accept every race. I mean, if you go to America, you get two cues. In every train station, one is called U.S. citizens and the other one is called aliens. 
we're classed as aliens because we're not um, U.S. citizens, right? And my husband got into an argument once with with uh, an African lady in in New York um, on the trains uh, because she goes, "Hey, you're an alien. Get in that queue." And he goes, "Excuse me." He 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 was like, he started getting into an argument with her that you look more an alien than I do because. She was actually, you know what, her, her her mentality, it was it was so horrible the way she said it. She goes, you're an alien, get in that queue. You're an alien, get in that queue. You're American, get in that queue. It's yeah. been, it's like the the, the aggression she had yeah. was absolutely horrible. And I says to my it, husband, It's look, people how they're taught, isn't it? As they grow up, it's how people are taught to actually look at other people. I mean, I was, my parents, it was like my dad was quite a racist person. But I changed him as I grew up because I'm not. I'm I'm complete opposite. And yeah. my mum will say certain things. And I go, really? But it's it's what happened back in the day. Um, but, yeah, you know, yeah. we live in a, in a multinational com- uh, country. I don't live in a company. Yeah, we live yeah. in a country. Yeah, and it's very mm-hmm. much that, you know, everybody has got blood running through their veins. And it's it's like um, I, I saw a little thing on Facebook the other day about the, uh, the eggs. You've got like a white duck egg and you've got a normal size like egg and you've got a dark egg. And it, open it inside and inside it looks exactly the same. And, that, yeah. and that's the way I see things, exactly that. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are. At the end of the day, as long as you're nice to me, I'm going to be nice to you. And, yeah, and it's yeah, yeah. exactly that. And it's all about, you know, helping each other out, no matter who you are, what you are. And, and it's actually, you know, giving everybody a chance to move forward together. And, and mm. so many people are, are back in the Middle Ages and back in like from years to years ago and, and don't accept people and certain races of what they should and shouldn't be doing. Because I know for a fact, with the confidence that I have and the way I am as a person, if I went into that community, is the women will be wearing clothes like I'm wearing. Or they'll go out and they won't have mm. their head covered. And they won't because they'll have the confidence to say, I am the person I am and I want to be the person I want to be. And I know mm. that. But then how many more people are actually going to accept I that? I haven't even got makeup on nothing today. No. I thought, you know what? This is me. You know, this, this is, is me on a Sunday afternoon, chilling in my hoodie, you know, yeah. and just waiting for you to, to log me in. And, you know, it's so important because it's it's a about having that confidence it's about having that mindset that you can accept yeah. anyone so you're telling me if, if somebody was on the floor and they were from African origin or an English origin I wouldn't get up to help that person of course I would yeah. because it's there's only one race I believe there's only one race in the world in the whole world and it's it should have been made a big point back in the days um it's called humanity yeah right. humanity and it's time to change is, now Let's make sure everybody out there knows and let's change that now. And, and, and I understand that. So I don't see it as whether it's women empowerment or man empowerment. I see it as in equal. Let's let everybody be equal, no matter if you're a man, woman, uh, and no matter what colour you are, we are all equal at the end of the day. And that's yeah, exactly, that's, cool. that's what I believe. Yeah, hundred percent. So I mean, let's go on to the next subject because obviously we've got quite a few subjects with you. It's very much that Rani goes through so many different things that she's gone through in her life that we're not going to stick to one subject. We're going to go through a few because mm-hmm. you know this is what we do. <laughs> so you also um, you also had your own TV show. Mm-hmm. So what was that about? Right, it was called New Day, New Life. I used to bring yeah. people on from. I had. Um, the um, one of the ministers from Malawi who came from Africa, I met her at a, an, at an event in Parliament, and she couldn't come to my show that time. My show was called New Day, New Life. It's about how people, um, you know, what they do in their everyday life, where, where they've come from, how they survived, what they went through, you know, the obstacles they did to get to this country. You know, uh, when I met Gertrude from Malawi, um she was absolutely brilliant and we've stayed friends for like three years now she has continuously invited me out there because you know they could do with so much help out there with you know education with um educating women anything to do in that kind of sense i also um interviewed a gentleman called manjinder who's who's a punjabi guy but he's gay and he's so proud of it because he didn't know you know sometimes we don't know about it he had to educate First, his parents teach them what it was to be a gay because they thought he had an illness. They were continuously taking him to the doctors, you know, getting him checked. But he said, you know what, mom, dad, you got to understand that it's not an illness. It's not something I've read in a book. It's it's how my feelings are from inside. So once he educated his parents, um, whose mom now comes on live and she teaches other Asian parents what it's like to have a child who's actually suffering from inside. 
you know, I've got African friends whose kids have changed or, you know, English friends whose kids have changed from being a woman to, to a guy or being from a guy to a woman, you know, because it's it's these kids are so, you know, they, they end up taking their lives because they got no one to speak to. Um, and it was really important to get that guy on my show because there were so many Asian people being attacked, you know, in Southall, in, in Birmingham, any place, you know, because you're not allowed to be gay. In, in the is in the Muslim community in the Indian community there's so many Muslim people uh, who are lesbians gays you know they're allowed to talk about lesbians but they're not allowed to talk about gays why is really? it yeah 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 even in the Bollywood industry you you get people talking about gays but you're not allowed to talk about lesbians because you know it's it, there's a taboo against it and that's why they show you know uh, when people get married um, who are lesbians there was a policewoman who got married I think last year. She married her lover and, you know, it was covered with all the news reporters, everything, because they stood by their grounds because, you know, yeah. you're allowed to live. Why can't you live the way you want to live? Why should you live yeah. according to society or the way people are going to look at you or judge you? You know, and she was she was quite she had a quite high position in, in the police industry um, and she stuck by her guns, you know, because otherwise you get killed. It's honor killing. Yeah. yeah. And, and then when Manjinder explained to his parents his mom now has her own blog where she's teaching parents you know to give your kids a chance you know listen to them and let them live this way you know and and in the Indian community it's like oh my god you know what are people going to think he's never we're never going to be grandparents he's never going to have children you know um, it doesn't matter what people think it's a matter it's a matter of what you think and how your children are feeling it's really important to sit with your children, ask them how they're feeling. Half of these kids, you know, 20% will end up give, killing themselves because, you know, they haven't had a chance to explain how they're feeling or they're dying from inside. And the easiest way out is just to kill themselves. Their friends know about because, how they feel. Yeah. Yeah. When you've got that kind of kind of situation that everybody's against you, as you said, you've got all the killings, you know, they feel like they're going to be taken away from their family. The families are going to disown them. They're going to kill them. You know, you've got all those kind of things going on in your head. The last thing you want to do is to upset that apple cart. You know, yeah. and, I, and I would love to, if you can get in touch, I would love to actually get in touch with him and, and, and actually get that out there a little bit more because, you know, no, there sure. is so many people, yeah, so many yeah. people around the world that are actually, you know, as you say, are dying inside with all the things that are going on. And I'm probably the confident person to sit there and go, do you know what, I'm happy to talk about it because at the end yeah. of the day, everybody has the right to live their own life how they want, as long as they're not hurting mm -hmm. anybody else. And yeah. do you know what, they're not hurting anybody else. They're just living their life of how they want and enjoying it and enjoying each other. And it doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, you know, and and if you're the same sex, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. if that's what makes them happy, that's what makes them happy. So exactly. You no, know, there's so many gay. Uh, sorry, there's so many gay clubs now, Asian ones in Birmingham. There's a, a village in Birmingham called the Gay Village where people go and they can feel free. They can breathe. They can be themselves. They don't have to hide behind closed doors. Um, there's a lot of nightclubs here in London as well where you're allowed to dress as women. You know, they're not transgenders, but they like to dress as women because they feel that, you know, even though you're in a man's body, they feel like dressing up as a woman. It makes them feel so rebel. beautiful. Let them rebel. Yeah. <laughs> it makes them feel beautiful, you know. Mm. And I've got many, many friends who are lesbians or gays, and I love it. I love hanging out with them because they're just so happy. You know, they're just so happy because they can be themselves. And it's yeah. really sad because... What happened was after he, he did his launch at um, Houses of Parliament for his book called Bollywood Gays, um, as you saw in my interview, um, a lot of people came forward to him and said, you know what, we're actually really sorry that we didn't let you come to places of worship because, you know, we felt it was it was something that, you know, we didn't want our kids to follow or other people to think that, oh, it's all right to be gay because, yeah. you know, again, it's, it's the education that... Yeah, uh, people didn't realize that it's not actually an illness or it's not something you read it's got to come from within your, your you know the feelings you've got inside your body and you know they apologized to him you know because it made them come out of their shells and tell him that actually you know what I think I'm gay you know and that that took him back and thought yeah. well you know what it it takes it takes only one person to listen and and bring come on that platform and tell people it's all right to be yourself. You know, it's all right to live the way you want to live. Yeah. 
Mm. That's right. And it's exactly the same whether it comes in life, whether it comes in business. There's so many people out there are scared of change. There's so many people out there that are scared to actually take that next step just in case they get it wrong, they foul, they get put down, whether they get looked at in a different way. You know, there's so many people with judgment out there. But you know what? Step in your own shoes for five minutes. And and if you feel as though you can still judge someone, you know, you better make sure you're damn perfect. Because at the end of the day, I don't know what... I mean, those people who, who judge people, are they're not happy in their own lives, mm-hmm. you know. They're quick to talk about other people, but yet, you know, we have a saying in our Punjabi uh, culture saying that, you know, uh, get a stick and put it under your um, bed and see how many co- uh, things come out. So, in other words, that don't judge somebody um, for who they are, what they're going through, when you've got so many issues going on in your own homes. Yeah, Look after... Right yourself look after people around you your loved ones don't worry about what's happening in people's houses but then you know maxine you know it doesn't matter again like which community you're from um it's that mindset it's that mindset to know that these people are not gonna listen to you they're gonna still gossip they're still gonna do what they want to do and it's, it's actually really sad really sad and it's getting worse and worse and worse yeah, and I think it's very much because some people are getting more and more confident. I, I don't know whether it's actually the fact is that it's getting worse. It might be the fact is I don't. It might be I don't know, but it might be the fact is that some people have accepted it more, and the, and they've gone actually I'm going to do this. So a lot of people have mm. gone well. Hang on a minute, you know I'm going to put a stop to this because this isn't right because it's not what I believe. And a lot of things in life is very much is what people believe is right, and they always think that they are right. And, and the fact is, it's like you know they don't see other people for, for who they are and what they are. So it's what yeah. they do is when they get themselves out there, they go, well, that ain't right. I mean, I did exactly the same as me growing up when I was 16. I went with someone and I was with him for five and a half years and he was many, many years older than me. But it was like, you know, my parents, well, they, they realistically disowned me for a year. But then after that, it was like, you know, they started speaking to me, but they wouldn't have him in the house. And I was like, well, you know, that's down to you. If you don't want to see me at Christmas, you don't want to see me on my birthday. That's down to you because you know what? I'm living my life how I want to. And I am my own person. You know, you live your life how you want to. I have not turned around and said to you, you cannot live with my dad or you cannot live with my mum. You cannot, you know, drive with that car. You know, it's not my place to tell you what you can and can't do. And it's not your place to tell me what I can and can't do. You know, mm. I am my own person. And I was with him for five and a half years. And, you know, my mum turned around and said to me, not only a few years ago, that the reasons why that happened is because it made the family look bad. And I turned around mm. and said to her, it's no matter how bad it looked, I felt at the time it was right for me. And I felt that what I did at the time was good for me. It's not about how it felt because you should have stuck by me and said exactly what I said. It's her life. Mm. She does what she wants to do and it's got nothing to do with you. And that's the thing. Mm. So many people worry in their life about what other people think and feel about them. That it's, it's a fact is it stops them going far in their life. It's that, you know, the fear is, is through the roof because they're yeah. scared of actually doing things in their life and the way they go and things that they do. And, you know, and, and I just think it's such a hard thing that nowadays in like over the year 2000, you know, people mm. should get used to it and it is what it is and, and they should suck it up. You know, <laughs> that's me. Sorry, yeah, I'm no. being raw as myself tonight. I'm just yeah. like, you know, it, it's a hard <laughs> thing. Um, no, I mean, back, you've got to, your, back to your story back to what you just said you know all these kids that feel neglected or they feel they can't speak or they can't live their life or they're restricted to you know you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do that Mm -hmm. they're vulnerable that's when these predators right that come from the grooming gangs can attack these kids right and that's why kids kids go astray or girls have ran away or boys have gone wrong or boys have committed suicide because they don't get a chance to talk about how they're actually feeling. It's really important for parents to build a relationship with their kids, you know, a friendly relationship. It's not all about, you know, oh, you need to go and lose weight. You need to go and get a job. You need to go and do this. No, talk to them about how their day was, how, how you know, what they've been up to. You know, um, I've always, like, sat down with my kids. You know, we watch the news or we watch a film. We chill out. We have popcorn. You know, I've always had a friendly relationship with them. Because it's so important to have a laugh with them, you know, because, the, you know, kids forget to laugh, you know, they go into depression. Um, a few years ago, sorry, a few years ago, one of my friend's friends, um, her son was a really lovely guy, only 21 years old, um, you know, didn't feel too well. He told his mom he's feeling he's got a headache. 
Um, you know, she says to him, come on, I'll make you a doctor's appointment. She made him a doctor's appointment. Um, and it was a four o'clock appointment, three o'clock. He goes, I'm just going to go for a walk. I'll meet you at the surgery. He didn't come back. He didn't turn up at the doctor's surgery. 16 days later, they found him floating on a riverbank, the same place where one of his uncles took his life. And till this day, his, his body was so deteriorated in 16 days that the parents weren't allowed to see his body. And, you know, till this day, there's still unanswered questions of what went wrong, what was he going through, you know, why did he not talk to us? Um, you know, they're, they're, they're never going to know. They're never, ever going to know. So it's really, really important how, how life is changing so much that, you know, you spend some time with your children. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, for anybody that's just joined, because there's a few of you that have just joined already, it's very much that we, we're talking a lot of different issues today. We're talking about women's empowerment. We're talking about, you know, entrepreneurship and, and um, events. And we're talking to Rani about, you know, even when it comes down to racism and, you know, cultural killings and there are so many things in this life it's, it's a lot to do with fear it's a lot to do with the unknown which is basically what Gianna just said you know and, and and you know knowledge is the way forward education is the way forward and when it comes down to your children educate every single child to say it's okay to go and talk to that black person it's okay to go and talk to that Indian it's okay to go and talk to that mm. English person it doesn't matter because the, every, everybody is the same Everybody inside has their own blood. You know, they have their own thoughts. They have their own brains. They walk this earth. It doesn't matter what colour, what race you are. It's very much that as long as you are nice to each other, you know, you don't have to judge anybody. And you don't have to have all these for saying, this makes my family look bad. This looks really bad on me. You know, at the end of the day, it's not about that. It's all about mm -hmm. working together as a team. It's all about being empowered together as a community. And it's not just, I'm mm -hmm. not talking about a Sikh community, an Asian community, an English community. You know, I'm talking about a community as a whole, as a human race. We are one massive community in one world. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if we're going to keep destroying each other, we're going to destroy the world and there won't be nothing mm -hmm. left of us. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's uh, something that Disney changing quite quickly. Um, so we're going to mm. go on to the, the next thing that we've got there, Rani, is that, you know, we started talking about, obviously, the TV show. You've also got a radio show that's coming up as well. Yeah, I'm um, actually, about. what happened was uh, a couple of years ago, well, this, this shows, I put a stop to it for a while because my son wasn't well, so I pay, paid attention to him. Then I, I fell a bit ill, um, got myself sorted. So now I'm going to restart the show and the radio show and the TV show again, um, like mm -hmm. you're doing right now. So yeah. uh, Be Live is going to be my next um, platform. Uh, but I want to do it in such it. a way. That, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but I want to do a live show where people can actually come and speak to people one to one. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be on a stage. It'll be, you know, we've got a restaurant, beautiful restaurant, banqueting hall. So I'll probably be based there uh, where I'll get people to come and actually speak live on stage where she, they'll have an audience. So it'll be a live audience show. And, you know, I'm just in the process of that. And the radio station will also come along as well. And I'll be Fantastic. getting in touch with you because you could be one of my hosts. Um, I'd love you to host the shows for me. And I can, um, I can always, always come and help. I don't mind being on at any time. That's not a problem. So as soon as you put yeah. someone else has gone live, yeah, they probably have because we're literally coming two minutes before the before end of our interview. But um, we did come on a bit late, so I'm, I'm just going to run over slightly. It should probably be Bradley that's, uh, that's coming on live. I've just looked at that. Um, sure. Right. So just just obviously we go very quickly. You also do um, you're also an actress. You do TV commercials. You also do marketing campaigns, mm -hmm. charities and different organizations. How did you actually get into that, Ronnie? When my kids were younger, my sister used to work for Sky Studios and um, CBBS got in touch with her that they needed they needed some kids. So I got my kids into it. My nieces and nephews got into it. And then I carried on doing it because my sister would contact me saying, you know, Sky Studios need someone to do a campaign for uh, the election. So I, I'd put my name forward. So I got into it slowly. Then my kids were um, um, recognized to do a short film with Bashka Patel, who plays Rishi in Emmerdale Farm. But um, our film was called Jung, which means uh, war. And it was right. about a Pakistani family living on a state, on an estate where they were targeted um, by racists and how they stuck up for their parents, you know, even though they were only two little kids, 
my sons played that role really well and the 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 chemistry between them was brilliant i had to play the mom's role in it bashkir patel was my husband in it and it was phenomenal so that went on for years and years and years it's been it's been just over 10 12 15 years i think and you know it's been phenomenal so i i've actually done things like holby city silent witness um uh, lots of adverts commercials and i've really enjoyed it so that's how i did it Brilliant. Yeah. Sounds absolutely fabulous. So, you know, talking about the th- lot of things that you've done, you're also an ambassador um, mm-hmm. of, it, is it Feminacy? Yeah, Feminacy.com. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah, so what, what does that do? So I know you've got the Hope Foundation and the Smiles Education Foundation, but mm-hmm. what does that actually entail? Right. All these, uh, all these um, platforms are just one, well, apart from the Smiles one, Feminacy and... Uh, um, Feminacy and the other one, which was um, Hope, is the okay. same platform where you're helping people, survivors, uh, people who have been through domestic violence or someone to just talk to. I'm going to be organizing a lot of events where people can come and I'll be doing workshops uh, with four different you know, subjects going on on the, on the day where you can come and spend the whole half afternoon or evening and, you know, get get help in in whatever subject you're stuck in could be computers could be someone who just needs someone to talk to about honor killing i mean there's so many things going on in in homes where friends get to know about it but they don't know who to tell so it'll be to educate people of of how they can get help and how they can help the next person you know with honor killing and how kids are taken over to india and still you know it's still happening now where you know the child's only like 15 16 and they have to marry a 40, 50 year old, you know, because it's all a matter of money or it's about honor, it's about their religion. And, you know, it's it's really important to get these people to understand that. Feministy, a lady called Farah got in touch with me. We got connected mm-hmm. with Shaper, uh, which is connected to LinkedIn. And we met for a coffee. We didn't have enough time, honestly. We were talking. The uh, the appointment was fully supposed to be for an hour. It was at my restaurant. So we wined and dined, and it was beautiful. We ended up being together for like four hours, and she asked me to be the ambassador. Again, it's, it's a common platform for women to come in as an individual, as groups, as organizations. And so people can, other people can know about what you do what your you know what your actual goal is and how you're going to help other people so it's a common uh, platform to help each other the smiles one is based in um, in uh, india it's a lady called mandeep um, and her husband's name is mandeep who's based in america now he works out there and anything he he him and his wife are running an organization called the smiles um, campaign and the simba cart now, the Simba cart is a cart. Like the, do you remember Rag and Bone Man used to come on the yeah. streets and ring the bell? Yeah. Well, they have one called the Simba cart where people throw their pairs of shoes in. Those yeah. shoes are then taken to a cobbler who fixes the soles, sews all the sides up and everything, and they're distributed to homeless people. Wow. Right, and she's paying for the whole of this herself. Also, she works in an office, nine to five. When the office closes at five o'clock, She's allowed to use the facilities, the computers, the screens, the the stationery, everything up to eight o'clock, nine o'clock. These children go to normal state schools and they run come rain or shine. They come, you know, they, they, they run like five miles, two miles, three miles just to come and get educated in in art, in computers, in English, in fashion designing, in dancing, in singing. And and they love it. They absolutely Beautiful. love it. That'd yeah. So this is yeah. So this is what she's doing in in based in America, just near the Golden Temple, uh, a beautiful area called Amritsar. So I got involved with her for three years, and I I send donations over. In fact, she doesn't take donations. What my friend does is he goes over every year in January, and I give him a lump sum of money. He actually goes and buys the stationery and goes and delivers it to her personally. Uh, these kids, the excitement on their faces are, yeah. you know what, I'm just absolutely speechless because the videos they send me to say thank you, you know, the love and the affection they show because, you know, these are third world countries where we throw money here and there, we waste money, we buy things we don't even need, um, unnecessary things, you know, 
just to say, say thank you just for a packet of stencils or pencils or crayons or whatever they feel so like loved that it's it's christmas every single day for them cuz so many people come and you know donate shoes they donate blackboards they donate lots of things so that's how this charity's been going and mandeep has actually been um you know really really recognized all over the world she's been called to america she's been called all over india to speak on tedx um speeches and platforms and stages and and tell everybody about how she started this and why she started it and um, she hasn't had her own children yet she cuz she feels that these are her kids you know, all her children yeah, yeah. You know, you do realize I'm going to say to you about trying to get her in, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to hear her story and the reason why she does it. So, I mean, I yeah. do have a question yeah. for you to say, why do you help others in this way? But, I mean, that just melted my heart completely. And I imagine that everybody else is the same. You know, guys, yeah. send us some love because, you know what, that's absolutely an amazing thing to do to actually, you know, get yourself your own money, your own hard earned money and giving that to a charity you know, so they can go out and get all their equipment for yeah, when it comes down yeah. to all the stuff that they need to actually learn for things, like, as yeah. you said, third world countries that don't have that kind of thing. That's just such an amazing feeling to do. It and, is. Yeah, it I is. can. Mm. I mean, so, so, so many people run charities, but they misuse the money. Um, it's better to actually just buy something and donate it as in what they need, whether it's stationery, whether it's clothing, whether it's shoes. I mean, I go to charity shops and I buy it from one charity shop and then donate it and give it to another charity shop because for me, I've done something different or I go and give food at the local Sikh temple because the food there is is cooked 24 hours. You can walk into any Sikh temple and they will not let you leave until you've eaten something. That's why, you know, it doesn't matter what race you're from. If you go into a Sikh temple, you'd be, you'd be so shocked to see people from the English community, from the Chinese community, from the African community who come in, they listen to the music. You know, for us, God says, you know, our, our Guru Nanak Ji said, you know, your home, uh, a place of worship is like, you know, anybody who comes in there is like God sent, right? And and you must you mustn't let them leave without any food or drink because it's it's actually very disrespectful. It's like God's entered your house. Each human has come as as a role of God into your house, whether it's for a blessing or whatever. You know, you know who who good people are. You sometimes we don't know who bad people are, but then you know what? If you've walked into a place of worship, just to see what it's like, it's it's a big thing, honestly. And our Sikh temples have have their doors open all the time. It's an amazing thing to know. And do you know what? For people like me, I wouldn't have known that. So not mm. only are you educating me, but you're also educating all the people that are actually listening to you this evening. So I just think it's absolutely amazing. I'm so glad that I brought you on, Rani, because, you know, there is so much information there that, that you've given other people. And I just think it's amazing. And, and I know that you personally get a lot out of that. And I can yeah. see it in your face and I can see it in, in the things that you do. I mean, is there any last words that you would like to say out there to other people? What's your message? Yep. I would I would like to say if you can make the difference make a difference to even just one person you know listen to people um if you think that you haven't seen someone for a while connect to them you know there might be something that they're going through but they they don't feel like they want to share it because they feel intimidated or pressured that you know they don't want people to feel sorry for them and it's really really important to just make that call make that difference to someone i mean my father um, he actually got to play the tabla in front of the queen when he arrived to this country. That's how he he ended up, you know, making a base here. And he's he actually gave back to the community so much. He actually performed the tabla. He played instruments, any instrument he could play. He performed in local temples, uh, people's weddings, you know, religious ceremonies. So whatever I do today is because I'm so proud to be my father's daughter. And if I can oh. give back. Even till the last, my last breath, I will still do it, no matter what. That's absolutely amazing. See, well done to uh, to Rani because at the end of the day, you are absolutely an amazing lady, and this is the reason why. You know, you had to come on live. Um, we didn't know when it was going to be, but we knew it was going to go. It was going to be soon. And I rang her up. Today I was, I was and I really went, happy when you made that call today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I was like, Rani, I need you, and she's like, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm so glad that you had time off, to ready to, you know, that 
we could we could touch base today and the fact is we got you on because there is so much information there that you've given over that could help so many people and you know we want people to reach out you know I, i'm mm-hmm. um jotty's put so lovely to hear this um I'm really terrible at names. I'm really sorry. Um, Shashi has put wonderful police to listen to you. Susan sends you loads and loads of hearts. And, you know, there's so many other oh. people who are so happy that you've been here today. And it's been absolutely amazing. And, and we've actually run out of time like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I, get, I know I get stuck legs from But we're ladies, but, we're allowed to. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> we won't go there down the route. Not yet. Um, yeah, so it's very much that, um, you know, for everything you're doing, I think it's absolutely amazing, you know, and I can't wait to listen to the next thing that you're going to do. And I'm going to be seeing you again in February because I am going to be you doing a, me. yeah, I'm going to be doing a, another Facebook Live ready for broadcasting um, at Pinewood mm. Studios. And I'm going to be doing the same again just to have a bit of laugh Fantastic. and get everybody involved. But this time it's not going to be in fancy dress. We're actually going to get to see everyone's faces, which is going to be absolutely amazing. <laughs> the downside to that is all the people that I did meet in, in um, when it comes down to the, the um, October event for Halloween, it's like everyone was covered and they people could talk to me. I didn't know who they were. Because it was like, I don't know who you are because you're all covered in makeup. And then kind of comes to the Christmas event, we did fancy dress again. And I was like, I got to know quite a few more people. But still, there were some people, it's like, I still don't know who you are. <laughs> because we was all dressed up and all had makeup on and everything else. So, you know, it'd be nice to actually see everybody plain face so I can get to see who everybody is and actually get to meet people face to face and completely raw. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, mean, I think this time what I'm going to do is, as people walk in, I'm going to get like a big sticker so they can stick it on their chest to say who they are. Yeah. yeah. Because it's yeah, really important absolutely. to identify them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's a good way as well. Mm-hmm. And also have a, st- a stick on the other side. Say, would you like to be broadcasted? And I know I can go up to them people and go, I'm having you later. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or another one in the middle saying, be aware, Maxine's on the prowl. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that too. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> I'm trying to get Brad involved as well, so there would be both of us going, but it all depends on how busy he is, but I'm trying to get him there. We'll see how it goes. But, um, yeah. yeah, talking about Brad, it's very much that we've got two events coming up in the next couple of weeks. We've got Rajan's event coming up on the 13th of uh, January. It's his wellness event. This is his first event. And with that, we've got speakers coming on stage, and we've also got people in the audience that can listen to everything to do with wellness, whether it's to do with meditation, yoga, fitness, dietitians, whether it's to do with healing, whatever it is to do with any kind of wellness that you can possibly imagine. I mean, the list is like this long. It's absolutely huge, this list. Get yourself a ticket. They're literally only £19, and it's for a whole day of listening to different people. You can interact, you can get involved. And also, Rajas Turner said to me that he's going to do breakout tables, and he's actually going to interact mm-hmm. with you quite a lot in certain different things. So it's going to be an absolutely amazing day. So get yourself on there because it is going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to be there as well. I mean, what could you want? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's on the 13th I'll, I'll on Sunday. Well, so nice uh, Rani's going to be there as well. Absolutely brilliant. So she's going to be there as well on the 13th. 13th of January so we will both be there during the day if you want to come and say hello if you want to come and chat then obviously we'll be there for you and all you've got to do is come down to King's College in London um, mm-hmm. speak to Rajan or message anybody actually at the um, Inspire to Achieve Global TV and we will get back to you if you need your tickets um, I was going to put tickets on here which I can still do that is not a problem I'll make sure that it all goes on there um, we've also got our next event which is the 2nd and 3rd of February which is our massive empowerment event now we're talking we want 1100 people in that room we're talking we've got 45 people minimum standing on that stage and we're talking about big speakers we're talking about tony j salimi we're talking about douglas vermeer and we're talking about greg walker um we've got um raymond Aaron, we've got harry sardinis we've got lily we've we've got the 12 we've got bradley we've got alfie best co-hosting it there is so much going on there is so many people going to be stay, stand on that stage we've also got al kashama you know there is all these different people that are actually going to be there and they're all there for you and they're all there for you all these different things whether it's branding marketing wellness whether it's you know people for your life whether it's for your business no matter what it is people are going to be there so for the sake of 48 hours, and everything is half price at the moment as well, for the sake of 48 hours of your life, it could actually transform your life, your business, into something you really, really want. And it's going to be powerful. And you've got the mm. best speakers from around the world. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So I want to say thank you to everybody that's like my, joined. Like my new mug. <laughs> Her ladyship. Oh, has one does, lady. <laughs> so I want to say thank you very much to Rani for, for joining me. It's been absolutely amazing. We've also got, I'm going to go through who we've had on today, which is absolutely beautiful. We've had Jenny, she's in. Uh, Jotty, we've got Shashi, sorry, my lovely. Uh, Susan, we've got Giano. 
We've also got May White. She's coming as well. Thank you very much. Uh, we've also got, we've got a few more coming on. Abraham, he's in the house. Um, we've got lots and lots of different people. Uh, Mahosh, mm. Mo, Mohini, Mohini. We've got Richard. We've got Dave. Um, we've also got, oh, there's so many, so many different things on there. You're going to have to go through all these because so many people have messaged you to say how amazing you are, Ronnie. I shared, it, I shared it with everybody while I was trying yeah. to... Um, find out how to log in myself <laughs> exactly exactly that we've got a rajan's coming in the house absolutely fantastic that he's joined us as well and uh, we've also got daniel from weta entertainment he's coming as well and and we've got um c Tao, um aisha uh, mandy wow we've got so many people that even got inspired to achieve come and see you today so we've got farah she's in the house as well mm -hmm. um yet yeah, so many people have actually come in to come and see you to see exactly what you're all about and what you do and who you stand for so i want to say thank you everybody that's actually been on here today it's been absolutely amazing we have gone over time and i want to say thank you to you ronnie and i'll be seeing you on sunday and yep, also definitely. with everybody else exactly everybody else i'm going to be seeing you, you on you tuesday that's all thank right. you for having me it's, it's been, been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you too. You too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like non-stop talking, the pair of us. But um, I know. yeah, I mean, on Tuesday, I'm going to be coming back and it's all going to be looking at you on Tuesday. Um, not you, Ronnie, but just as in people in general. Oh, um, and it's all about helping you overcome you. Uh, and, and that's a big thing it's, as Brad says it's getting out of your own way and moving forward so I've been doing the content for that so that's going to be happening and then on Thursday we've got the lovely Philip Chan he's coming in the house and um, we're going to actually go and do interviews with Philip because he tells everybody that he's people's bodyguards he tells everybody that he's just a maths expert but you know what there is so much more to this man and I'm going to dig in deep with him so we're <laughs> going to find out a bit more information about that one sure. but um yeah, absolutely fabulous. So make sure you, you're in for that one on Ronnie because it's, uh, sure. you know, you've got to let everybody know the 529 Club need to be in the house. Of course, they will <laughs> be there. Got one of their own coming in. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, I want to say thank you very much for everything and we're going to go now and take care and I'll speak to you on Tuesday. Thanks for coming. Thank you. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs>